phosphate in a 20 gallon reef tank can be a tough nut to crack. Uh, you have to test your parameters, test your phosphate on a regular basis. I would recommend at least, at least once a week prior to your water change. Phosphate can accumulate in your tank, not just in the water column, but we call them uh, phosphate reservoirs. So what I will show you is my uh, progress in lowering my phosphates over the last, I would say, two weeks. I've tried specific things to lower it, and then you want to try to maintain that. But initially, you need to test. Here's the test I use, guys. It's the HANA phosphate checker and it's awesome uh, this package here I'm showing you uh, has cut lines on it uh, some people have complained about the package and how the powder inside pours out but if you do what I'm doing here I'm kind of shaking it to one corner um, and then I cut along the line so I'm finishing up the cut there and you can see it's kind of a rounded cut. I think they do that deliberately. I put that aside until I need it later. Here's the test vial. It's 10 milliliters and I get some aquarium water and you fill it to the line and you're ready to go. Okay, here I filled up the vial with the aquarium water. I'm wiping it off here. Uh, inside the checker, there's an eye and it won't read it properly unless you get rid of fingerprints and any kind of water on there. Uh, the checker is pretty straightforward. You open it up, you turn it on, and as soon as you see the C1, you're ready to test your first amount of water with no reagent in it. And that calibrates it, if you want to use that word. You push the button again, and now it's calibrating. It's reading the water without any reagent in it. And then the C2 shows up, and you take it out, and you're ready to put your reagent in, the powder. I unscrew the top, and you open up your container, or your packet there, and you pour that inside. I'm making a little funnel here out of it just to make sure I don't spill any. It's pretty important that you make sure it all goes in the vial. And I'm putting it in there. I'm tapping it to make sure it all goes in there. And once it's in there, I put the top back on and I'm ready to start shaking it. However, it's not a shake. It's more of a rotating up and down, back and forth. You want to do this for two minutes. It's pretty important that, that you stick to that amount of time. It has to fully dissolve. So I do this for about two minutes. This is the end of the two minute period here. And I'm drying it off again to make sure there's no fingerprints on it. I place it inside and then you close the lid and you push and hold the button this time until the three minute mark shows up on the LCD there. And you just let it count down. Uh, funny thing is you should have an additional timer around somewhere. Sometimes I walk away knowing I have three minutes and I forget uh, that it's going. And when you come back, it'll only stay on. That's one thing you have to keep in mind. The checker will only stay on unattended for about two minutes, I believe, after the countdown or any time you're just letting it sit around. So I usually set another clock and that way if I do forget, I, it'll remind me and I'll come back to it. So you can see it's counting down. I'm just hanging out there now for the video. Okay, here's the last few seconds of the countdown. And when it hits zero, it'll start to blink and it begins to read your test inside. Okay, and there it is. So my phosphate, uh, this test was about three weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago, was 0.20. That's high. 
It's not high for fish only or soft corals, but it's high for SPS. So my goal is to go from 0, 0.20 down to 0 0.03 around that area or under 0 0.1. So what you do is you take the test vial out. You, uh, they recommend that you clean it right away, not to infect the tube and you push the button to shut it off again and I uh, go take that and I clean it off. The issues with small aquariums like the 20 gallon reef tank is not necessarily harder you just have to be more vigilant and you have to stick to a really consistent maintenance you don't have time to miss things for a week or two uh, because then your parameters can swing too much. I change my water once a week and I change my filter sock twice a week. When I decided to keep SPS corals in the tank, that's when I really needed to check phosphate and nitrate. I've never had a problem with nitrate before. It's always been zero and still is. However, when I checked phosphate, I was 0.5 parts per million, which is well above the recommended amount. So I began to try to see what I could do to take phosphates down. The first thing I did was I vacuumed my crushed coral in here. That can be the number one place where phosphate collects. If your sand bed is less than an inch, you should always be vacuuming it at least once every two weeks, maybe a, a part of it once a week. Detritus can collect in the sand bed and over time that becomes a nutrient or a phosphate reservoir, meaning your phosphate can read 0.1, let's just say. But if you take a sample from your sand bed, which is what I did prior to lowering my phosphates, it was 0.8 in the water column. The science that I've learned behind phosphate and lowering it is this. If you have phosphate reservoirs that are high, what will happen is when you lower your phosphate in the water column, it's possible for one day you'll have low phosphate in the water column, but what happens is because of the phosphate reservoirs, they seek equilibrium. This is the only graph I can show you, is here's your reservoir, and here's your water column. And your water column is lower for a day or so, and then it does this. The phosphate is released out of the reservoir and it meets it at equilibrium. So it, that's why if you're trying to reduce phosphates and you do water changes, you're not going to see it happen. It won't happen with water changes alone. Uh, it could be coming from your live rock, old live rock, uh, your sand bed, your feeding. You know, if you're overfeeding, uh, it can come from that. But what I noticed about mine, the biggest phosphate reservoir in here was my sand bed, which was very small, and I neglected to uh, gravel vac it, as you would say, or vacuum it, and I needed to do that. When I did that, I dropped almost 0.4 from 0.5 to 0.1, but once again, the following day when I tested, it went up to 0.1 and a little bit above trying to reach equilibrium again. What I need to do now is get it down low enough so equilibrium is under 0.1. I would like to get it to be 0.05 or less. There's a really cool product out there called Phosphate RX. Uh, that's lanthanum chloride. And I attempted to do that also as an experiment and that worked great. It took it from 0.5 to under 0.1 and I went, wow, great, I just lowered my phosphate. But what happened is 24 hours later, I did a test again and it went up to two. And then 24 hours after that, it went up to 2.5. So it started to climb back up. I basically knew that there was something in my aquarium or something that I was adding, which was causing it to spread continue to spike. It wasn't, couldn't be food to spike it that much. I knew it had to be either my live rock in there has been old or my sand and I've zeroed in on sand. Just remember, do one thing at a time 
to attempt to make changes to your aquarium in almost every aspect of it. So for example, if I'm going to try vacuuming my sand bed to see if that reduces it, don't do sand bed and GFO on the same day. Uh, and that brings me to GFO. Right now I'm running Roafoss GFO in the back compartment and I'll show you that in the video. I've noticed since I vacuumed the sand bed with the amount of GFO I have in there, I've noticed it to over the last several days to drop a little bit each time. It started at 0.2, then it went to 0.14, now it's down to 0.11 and I'll probably see what happens in the next 24 hours. These are all things that I do that I find will work for me in my experience. Some people may say something different. The way you want to determine whether you're doing what's right and what's not right is what your tank looks like. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you found it informative. Uh, you know, subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell if you've subscribed and you haven't hit the bell yet. It'll update you. Uh, whenever I upload a video and thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one